Oh, yeah, what's up, YouTube? Settle in the comment, Jabroni. Coming at you from outside today. We are doing some grilling on the big green egg. Uh, got some, some pork chops to grill. So, you guys are always catching me at the craziest time. But I know you're looking for those Marvel New Comic Book Day reviews. Well, I'm just gonna have to stay tuned. Let me finish this up and I'll be right back with you. Yo, so welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back, YouTube and the comic book community. My name is Edwin D, Comic Jabroni, and in today's video, we're gonna discuss the Marvel books that I picked up this week on New Comic Book Day. If this is your first time catching one of the Comic Jabroni's comic book review videos, hey, think about hitting that subscribe button if you enjoy videos on comic books and retro video game goodness, Ninja Turtles and all that great geek and nerd culture. And remember to hit that bell notification so you know when I'm going live or I'm dropping a live premiere or I drop any type of video. So in the past two days, I have dropped videos on the new number one issues that I picked up, a DC new comic book day review video. And in today's, we're gonna go over the Marvel books. If you remember from the number one issues, I've already reviewed one Marvel book and that was Hellions number one, which was a book that I really enjoyed. But today I've got three more Marvel new comic book day comics to show you. So let's get into them. Comic boom. First book up on the list is Bounty Hunters issue number two. This is written by Ethan Sachs. The artwork is done by Paolo Villanelli. So I, after reviewing issue number one of Bounty Hunters, I said I was more than likely not going to pick up issue number two. That first issue just really didn't grab me like I thought a Bounty Hunters, a Star Wars Bounty Hunter story was going to. I just didn't really care about the characters that they introduced in that book. There wasn't enough Boba Fett to my liking, and I just didn't really care too much. But because of everything that's going on, and I don't know when's the next time I'll be able to get to a comic book store, when they're gonna open, I said, let me put out, let me give some money to the local comic shop, let me pick up this issue, let's see if issue number two was enough to get me to want to pick up more. And what I can say is that no, it's not. It's still on this brand new character's journey to uh, pick up this bounty on what seems to be his uh, mentor. And none of the characters that they really introduce in this Star Wars bounty hunter story are characters I really care about too much, right? When I read a Star Wars book, I wanna know about characters that I remember fondly from the movies or maybe some of the video games that I've played. And the characters in here are just ones that I didn't care too much about and the story isn't really anything that's engaging me as a reader. So let me go ahead and show you some of the interior artwork in here. The artwork is pretty good, I gotta say. Um, as far as Star Wars books go, it just, it shows a lot of action sets and a lot of pieces in there that, that really scream to you, yeah, this is a Star Wars story. And there is the one time in this book that you actually get to see Boba Fett. Now. That's something coming into Star Wars Bounty Hunter that I wanted to see more of, right? I want more story on Boba Fett. And especially after that Mandalorian came out last year, it really got me interested more in these Mandalorians and into Bounty Hunters. And this, I thought, was going to give us more of Boba Fett. And in actuality, it doesn't. It tells us more about other Bounty Hunters in this league and I guess I just don't care too much about it. Honestly, I'm not going to pick up issue number three of Star Wars Bounty Hunter, but I will continue with the Star Wars story and the Darth Vader because all three of these are set during that time, right? That one year period in between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. This one though, it just falls a little bit short of what I wanted in a Star Wars story. But enough of this one, let's get on to the next one. Panic boom! 
Next up, as my boy Wolf Warner would say, we got Wolverine issue number two. I grabbed this really nice cover with Wolverine right there front and center and Sabretooth jumping out at him. This is written by Benjamin Piercy and the artwork is done by Adam Kubert. For a second there, I thought it was Andy Kubert, but it's not. It's Adam Kubert. So if you remember from issue number one of Wolverine, there were two stories in that issue. First story dealing with Wolverine with X-Force going out there to try to stop this cartel that has been uh, selling this what they call pollen that is being created by the Krakoan flowers and plants that are being sold and shipped out to the different countries. Then the second story in that number one issue was about Wolverine having to deal with vampires and Omega Red and I thought that was the better of the two stories but this issue follows up on the first story from number one and not the second which is a travesty in my opinion because I'm a huge fan of Omega Red. I really wanted to read more about that vampire story and I don't know if we're gonna get more of that and if we do, when is it gonna be? But this one follows up on the first story. He killed, and by he pronouns pal, I mean Wolverine kills X-Force, right? And it is because the leading member of this cartel is this mutant or a super villain by the name of the pale girl and she is able to get into your mind and do things make you do things that you do not want to do and make you see these visions so just like an old man logan in this story wolverine sees his friends as enemies and he kills them and he does it out in the alaskan wilderness so he kills the rest of x-force because he sees them as these three up here so in this story he wakes up back on Krakoa where he's been knocked out and in a coma for a few days but he's having these dreams of what happened during that time and that's how you know you know he killed X-Force and this is the reason he killed them same thing has happened with Bishop and the Marauders so now Wolverine is having to kind of team up with this FBI or a CIA member to try to figure out who this pale girl is and who this cartel so in my opinion though out of Dawn of X titles I was really hoping that Wolverine would get a better series than what we're getting here. Now, if it was the first, uh, that second story, if we were getting a continuation of that story with Omega Red and the Vampires, I think it would have been a lot better. Uh, seeing as this is Wolverine's first series back in like five years, I thought they would have done a better job of giving him just a better story of Wolverine by himself. Now, this is looking like it's more of X-Force and then now he's teaming up with this FBI or CIA member and I don't know it just seems a little bit convoluted to me not the biggest fan of it uh, let me know what you thought if you were able to pick up Wolverine was this one of your favorites are you going to continue on with Wolverine I am more than likely going to drop Wolverine but continue on with Hellions if you remember from my number ones issue from two weeks uh two days ago Hellions was a favorite of mine I really enjoyed that story Wolverine though I gotta say yeah I could probably do without. But I got one more issue to get into. Let's go now. Sonic Boom! Last up from Marvel that I grabbed this week was X-Men plus the Fantastic Four. This is issue number three out of a four-part storyline. So it is a mini-series. This is written by Chip Zdarsky, which many of you already know because you've been reading Daredevil. I haven't, but I keep getting told Daredevil is one of the best reads out there. And I know in the comments you're going to say, Edwin, it is. You got to be on it. Bang it on it. But I like what Chip Zdarsky's doing just with this story. And the artwork is done by Terry Dotson. I did grab this awesome Mark Brooks connecting cover. So issue one and two will go on the top. Three and four are going to go down in the bottom. So it's going to make a really awesome four issue connecting cover there. So, in this issue, now we are on Doom Island because Franklin Richards, along with some members of the Marauders, are now marooned on Doom Island. And Dr. Doom has said that he can help Franklin Richards, unlike his father, who has not been able to figure out why his mutant powers are dwindling and dying off. But the Fantastic Four show up, the X-Men show up, they're there to save their sons, they're there to save the rest of the mutants that Doom has kept on the island. But those, those mutants, they say they're there because they want to be there. They don't want to go to Krakoa. They're on the island for a reason. So you've got Beast and you got Reed Richards going to make sure that Franklin Rich is okay because they are going to do an experiment on him. Dr. Doom has gone through the science, says this is the way to get his powers to work. 
and to work permanently. So when Beast and Reed Richards, they do their experiments, they check, they make sure that the science is sound, and they say it's good. But there's some other shenanigans going on on the island. Wolverine kills a Doombot, but it's not really a Doombot. It's somebody else. Don't want to give that away. I don't want to spoil it for you, but I will say that it is a great story. Chip Zdarsky is doing great things with this. He is really making sure that the Fantastic Four have a great voice in this. All of the X-Men that he features in here doing well with those characters. The artwork, in my opinion, though, is where this story lacks. And I know there are people out there that absolutely love the Dodsons, right? Terry Dodson and his wife. I cannot remember her name right now. Let me see if it says it in here. I'm not entirely sure if it does. No, uh, Rachel. Rachel Dodson? Rachel Dodson, yes. Yeah, so, you know, I have been a fan of their artwork before. I've seen it on covers. But to get a whole issue done by the Dodsons, I'm not sure if I'm a big fan of it. It's the, the artwork seems super simplistic. And in some cases, that is a great thing. But in this, I'm not entirely sure. It seems like there's a lot of detail not put in to some of the characters and everything seems just kind of bland. In my opinion, you could love the Dodsons and you could absolutely love this artwork. It's just not for me. But the story is where this is killing it. I cannot wait to read that next issue. Let's see what happens with Franklin Richards. Like I've talked about in the past, he is the strongest mutant ever. So if his powers are dying off, what happens then? Does he become just a human? Is he still a mutant? I don't know what happens, but I can't wait to read issue number four. There you go, guys. X-Men Fantastic Four. Out of the Marvel books, my read of the week has to go to Hellions. And if you want to see what I said about that, you're going to have to check out my number one issue review that I dropped two days ago. But that's enough of that. Let's keep it going. Panic Boom! All right, man, three issues this week from Marvel and another one. So there was really four, but the first one I reviewed two days ago, it was at Hellions. I thought that was a great issue. I did not pick any more Marvel up. Let me know down in the comments below what Marvel books did you pick up that I didn't get. Of course, I can't go out there and buy everything I want, but I pick up the things that I like this week. I picked up a few more books because of everything going on and I wanted to support that local comic shop that was open on Tuesday and had new books. Now, what's to come from the comic jabroni? Well, I still have my indie reviews coming out tomorrow and I've got two special guests, reviewers, to help me out with two extra books for you. So you definitely don't want to miss out on that. You do not want to miss who did the comic jabroni get to help him with some reviews? I also in the mail received my mystery mail call, which I will be opening tonight. I'll be recording that video and dropping that tomorrow or two days from now. I'll have a bourbon review to go along with it. I cannot wait to see what I got in the Comic Tom mystery mail call. But hey, thanks for watching the video. I'm Edwin the Comic Jabroni. Have a great day. Stay safe out there. Practice your social distancing and sheltering in place and at home. Definitely don't go outside shaking hands, giving people dap and doing all them hugs and stuff like that, guys. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Remember, iron sharpens iron. And I will see you next it's time. It's over 9,000!